What's up guys, Evil D here, and I'm back for some more Esperanto slash World of Warcraft lessons. Now, I know I haven't got a few of these videos up in almost a week now, but that's because I've been distracted with like other Esperanto videos on things that are just happening in the in the movement at the moment. Like seriously, there's so much stuff happening, I just, I can't decide what I want to do. Jesus, if it was up to me, I'd upload three videos a freaking day. But I don't have the time, so I'm sorry about that guys. Now let's just quickly kill this bear. Do you remember what the word for bear was? It is Udusso. Udusso. Okay, so, of course we're going to start with some revision. Now, what was the word for giant? It was Giganto. Giganto. Okay, and do you remember the word for bottle? It was Botello. Botello. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to head back down south here. Hand in the quests that we've done, if we've done any, or at least do the quests down there. And then I'm going to start probably moving over to the west and getting out of this area, because, you know, I'm getting bored again. Okay, so what was the word for raptor? It was raptoro. Raptoro. Now, I hate these guys here because they slow down my spells. So let's just smash them a bit. Okay, what was the word for... Or how do you say, um, how many bottles? Kiam da botelloi. Uh, I think I'm gonna try and flee around this area because these guys, their spell is just terror bad trying to take it on. Okay, um, can I get back up this hill? Yes, I can. And what was the word for tree? It was adobo. And what about to flee? It was Fuji. Fuji. And do you remember how to say uh, between? It was inter. Inter. Okay, and do you remember how to say because? It was chard. Chard. And I think just one more revision word for the day. What was the word for cougar? Now, we learned that one a while back. It was humo. Humo. Very good. So now we'll get into the, the heart of the lesson. So I figure I'm going to teach you a few new words while we're at it. So you see this, like, column looking thing, this pillory column thing? Those in Esperanto are, well, that one there is called a colono. Colono. Obviously, two is colonoi. So, because there's a lot of those around here, so I figure I should teach you the word for those. Okay, so we're just going to head down this way. And what we're going to practice today is we're going to learn a couple of new verbs, and then we're going to learn a couple of new suffixes and put those together. So first up, we're going to learn the word for to work. And to work in Esperanto is labori. Labori, okay? So how would you say, I work? Mi laboras. Mi laboras. And how would you say, she works? She labored us. She labored us. Okay, so the suffixes we're going to learn. So we're going to learn two straight up. The first one is isto. And you use that when talking about a profession or something that you treat in a professional manner. So you'll, you'll understand that a bit better in a second. But first I'll get you to the second one. And the second one is anto. anto. And anto means someone who's doing something right now. Now, the best way to understand these is in context. So, let's begin with, for instance, with the verb kuri. And you know what kuri means? It means to run. So, kuranto is someone who ru is running at this very moment. Okay? So, it's a runner. But kuristo is someone who professionally runs or does it as like their main profession, even if it's like they don't get paid for it, but if it's the main thing that they do every day, then they are a kudisto, okay? So you could think of like someone who's trying to get professional and every day all they do is they practice running. Um, obviously they can still have a job and everything, but like that's their main focus. While a curanto is just someone who goes for, you know, someone right now going for a run and it might be part of their daily schedule. So. How would you say a worker? As in someone who professionally works for a career. You'd say laboristo. And that is the standard word in Esperanto for 
a worker, like uh, any type of worker. What is that? What is that flying thing? Sorry, I just saw something fly over me. Okay, so how would you say someone who's currently working right now? That would be laboranto. Laboranto. Okay, and now we're going to learn our next little verb. So the next verb we're going to learn is to swim. And to swim in Esperanto is Naji. Naji. What is this? Quest item. Use. Restores. Blah, blah, blah. Whatever. I'll pick that up because they want me to pick it up. So, to say I'm swimming, you'd say Minajas. Minajas. So how would you say someone who is a professional swimmer? You'd say Najisto. What about someone who is everyday training as a swimmer because they intend to get into the Olympics or whatever? Again, you'd say Najisto. What about someone who's just having a swim right now? You'd say Najanto. And what about a worker? Someone who does it because that's how they make their money? You'd say Laburisto. What about someone who's just doing a little bit of work on the weekend? Laburanto. That's someone who's doing it in that moment. Okay, so you should be able to understand those two now from all that context I've given you. Okay, so now we're going to learn how to say um, uh, more and most. Okay, now for instance, in English you could say that uh, that tree, okay, is bigger than that tree. Now, first up, before we can learn um, more and most, because when you say bigger than, bigger than is actually more more big. Okay, that's basically what it translates as. Like for instance, if you wanted to say um, that tree or that tree is smaller than that tree, you're actually saying that tree is more small than that tree. Okay, because in English sometimes you use more and most, but sometimes you just add er uh, at the end of the um, word that you're using to say like bigger. Do you hear the er uh, at the end of big? That's also saying more big. It's a, it's a weird English thing, but you'll get the hang of it with Esperanto. So first up, we need to say that tree. So the way to say that tree, you'd say tiu arbo. Okay. Now you heard tiu there. Tiu means that, and then what you hear the u sound at the end because you already know tiu means that thing. So tiu means that, and then it's waiting for something else at the end. It's not waiting for a thing, it's waiting for something else that you're specifying. To say that tree, you'd say tiu arbo. To say that leaf, you'd say tiu folio. To say that thing, you'd just say tiu. Okay? So, to say that tree, you'd say tiu arbo. And if you wanted to say that tree is bigger than that tree, you'd say tiu arbo estas pli granda ol tiu arbo. Now, I know that's a lot of words I've just kind of just chucked at you at once there, but we're going to practice each one. So, then, as in comparative, as in like the English T-H-A-N, well, this is going to go bad. Um, I might have to... You know what? I'm going to flee because I won't survive this otherwise. So, how do you say, I flee? Mi fujas. Mi fujas. Because that's what I need to do right now, because that was a bad pull. Okay, cool. They're all gone. Now, so first up. Um, we're going to learn the word, uh, as I said, for uh, them, and T-H-A-N this is. So that's ol, ol, okay? So, next we're going to learn more, and the word for more is pli, pli. So, to say bigger than, you'd say pli granda ol. So pli means more, granda you already know means big, and ol means more. So, pli granda ol means bigger than. Okay? So, how would you say um, more beautiful than? Pli bella ol. Pli bella ol. So, you basically tack a pli at the beginning and an ol after the adjective. Now, how would you say um, he is more ugly than? How would you say he is more ugly than? We won't worry about what he's more ugly than at the moment. We're just practicing these words. Li estas pli malbella ol. 
Li estas pli malbella ol. Okay, and how would you say it is bigger than? G estas pli granda ol. G estas pli granda ol. And how would you say he is whiter than? And I know I'm using he and her with these things, even though these are kind of like animally things, but you know, when you've got like mutant half humanoid half like creatures, it's really up to you. So how would you say he is whiter than? Li estas pli blanca ol. Li estas pli blanca ol. I don't know if I can do this, but let's try. Let's hopefully I didn't get too many people coming out. Cool. Okay. So, how would you say he is whiter than that tree? Li estas pli blanca ol tiu arbo. Remember, you got to go tiu arbo because you're specifying that and you're specifying what that is okay you're not saying that thing you're saying what that actually is so it's tiu arbo now if that tree is tiu arbo how do you think you would say this tree well you would say chi tiu arbo or you could say tiu chi arbo remember the chi can move wherever you want it, but in Esperanto it's probably more standard just to say um, Chi Tiu Arabo, which is what I'm going to do pretty much in these lessons moving forward. Okay, so how would you say she is bigger than him? She estas pli granda oli. She estas pli granda oli. And how would you say he is smaller than her? Li estas pli malgranda ol she. Li estas pli malgranda ol she. Okay. And how would you say um, this bear is smaller than that tree? Chi tiu uruso estas pli malgranda ol tiu arbo. So, I'm going to say that again. Chi tiu uruso estas pli malgranda ol tiu arbo. Now, I know that's a lot of words and it's going to take a little bit to get, like, getting used to it, but we're just going to keep practicing, practicing these until I think you've got it down pat. So, how would you say uh, that bear is smaller than me? Tiu uruso estas pli malgranda ol mi. Now, we're going to head over there and probably raid that camp. Let me just quickly check what else I need to do. I need to get the... I've got the ambassador's robes and the Blackmall meeting agenda. Okay, cool. So, how would you say that bear is whiter than me? Tiu uruso estas pli blanca ol mi. Tiu uruso estas pli blanca ol mi. And how would you say that night elf is bigger than that bear? Tiu noctelfo estas pli granda ol tiu uruso. I know it can become a bit of a mouthful, but you know, a little bit of practice will get there. So, Tiu Noctelfo estas pli granda al Tiu Uruso. And how would you say, I'm bigger than this night elf? Mi estas pli granda al Chi Tiu Noctelfo. Now, I think I have to go into here to get this meeting agenda thing. Let's just do this. Okay, and do you remember how to say a column or a pillar? It is colono. Colono. And what about a professional swimmer? 
Najisto. Najisto. And how would you say she is more beautiful than me? She estas pli bella ol me. Okay, so now we're just going to practice what we've learnt um, during this lesson. We haven't learnt that much new stuff, but we have learnt a little bit of, you know, crucial stuff for moving forward with the language. Okay, so again, what was the word for column? It was colono, colono. And how would you say that column is bigger than that mountain? Tiu colono estas pli granda al tiu monto. And how would you say that thing, while pointing at this rabbit, um, is smaller than me? But don't say rabbit, just say that thing. Tio estas pli malgranda al mi. Okay, cool, we've taken this little bugger out. I didn't even expect this to be here. Now, I think I have to take this guy out, so let's let's just try this while practicing. So, how would you say it is more blue than me? Now, we learned blue a, a while back, but we haven't really used it since. G estas pli blua ol me. Ooh, picked up a clam. Okay, what are we going to get around here? Do I have to pick up this? Yes, I do. Okay, how would you say, why do you want to kill me? Kial vi volas modetigi min. And how would you say, because you're more blue than me? Chad vi estas pli blua ol me. Now, I know that's not really a valid reason to kill someone, but what, whatever. Oh my god, do I have to walk all the way back up there to hand in the quest? Oh, I do too. Anyway, a little bit of final practice. How would you say, um, those trees are red? Let's see if you can pick up on the little, nuance, uh, the little Esperanto nuance here. So, those trees are red. If you said, Tui Araboi estas rujai, you're freaking awesome because remember okay I haven't taught this to you yet and I'm assuming that some of you already know a fair bit more Esperanto than I've taught in these lessons but when you're speaking about one thing or like that thing you know how for instance if we say not that thing sorry that tree it's tiu arbo but remember if there's more than one tree you say araboi well tiu has to also match whatever it's um, connected to so tiu arbo is one tree. Said so, but sorry, I just turned into Esperanto then. Tiwi Araboi is those trees. Okay. So again, how would you say those trees are red? Tiwi Araboi estas rujai. Tiwi Araboi estas rujai. And how would you say those trees are bigger than me? Tiwi Araboi estas pli grandai ol me. Did you hear how I made it grande? Because the bigger is referring to the trees, it's not referring to me. So, tui araboi estas pli grande ol me. Now, all of this will take a little bit of practice to get used to, um, and we will continue on with that in the next lesson. But just, yeah, just remember that Esperanto, um, we plural the adjectives as well as the nouns, okay? Anyway, so we're at the end of this lesson. If you've liked it, give it a like, share it around with your friends, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video. And if you're not there, well, guess what I'm going to leave at the base of this mountain? <laughs> That's your body, by the way. <laughs>